Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 10 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and, of course, you, the listener. You make this ministry possible. And I'm excited to have you on the Building Great Lives team. And here at the Building Great Lives podcast, it's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. I want to say thank you so very much for sharing these episodes. I've been watching the continual growth, seeing new countries where episodes are being downloaded. That is beyond exciting because we're praying for these messages of hope to reach every possible person in every possible nation. And I'm thankful for your help in making that possible. You being part of the Building Great Lives team, you are making it possible for people around the world to hear these messages. Thank you so very much. And in today's episode, we're discussing how to transform your painful past into a powerful testimony. We're going to talk about our past. We're going to talk about some personal things, and we're going to talk about how God can use those things. I believe that God wants to use us. I believe that God wants to use all of us. And I know right now you're listening to this and you're thinking, but I'm not in the ministry. Or some of you are thinking, how can God use me in ministry when I have such a painful past? I've been through so much. I've experienced traumatic things. I want you to know that God wants to take those things and use them. I believe that you've been uniquely created. The situations and circumstances of your life have been uniquely ordered by God. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Those steps ordered by God are going to take you through some things that are very painful and difficult. Things that the enemy puts on you at times to try to distract you from God's purpose. Things that maybe even we have done to ourselves. But God takes those negative things, those difficult things, those painful things, and then uses them to help reach other people. So I believe today that some of you Having a painful past, having something happen to you that's very traumatic, God's wanting to use you to help reach other people. So within the mental health community, there is a school of thought that believes that humans are socially conditioned creatures whose futures have been determined by their past. And I want to say that again. They believe, many in the health community believe, that our futures have already been determined by our past. They believe an individual's past controls his or her destiny. Now, let me be clear. I'm not against mental health professionals. Actually, quite the opposite. I'm thankful for the work they do. I am thankful for how they can work with even in the things of God and bring help and healing to many traumatic situations. So I believe in the work of mental health community and many of the mental health fields. However, I do not believe that an individual's past has to control their destiny. Just because you have been through something painful does not mean that your future is to be a future filled with pain. Just because you have experienced hurt and trauma does not mean that you are destined to continually feel that way and experience that for the rest of your lives. While we honor what mental health community professionals do, we also acknowledge the work of the Holy Ghost. We acknowledge the work of the Spirit in our lives. And the work of the Spirit is that 
even though there's no doubt that we have experienced painful situations, those moments even become time stamps of our life story. Many times, we are, if we're not careful, those experiences become a heavy weight that can even make us stumble. But we do not deny the work of the Spirit. Even though we go through and endure traumatic situations, Even though those situations leave us feeling trapped in an emotional prison at times, even though the trauma is real, we do not believe the future is already set. I want to tell you in the very beginning of this episode that I believe there's a way for your future to be better than your past. I believe that there's a way for you to journey from the trauma into the things that God has called you to and along the way be able to transform the pain that you've been through into a purpose anointed by God. So what the enemy meant for evil, God turns into something good. And that something good is we can take what we've been through and learn to help other people as they walk down the same path that we have gone through. So instead of closing ourselves off, the healing journey opens us up first to God, then to other people. So as we've been hurt, when we're hurt, we immediately close ourselves off. It's like a wound to the body. When you hurt yourself, you you try to protect that spot that's hurt from being hit or being uh, uh, touched. When that spot on your body is hurt, matter of fact, that's why when I was uh, young, I broke my leg severely. I had surgery and I was in a cast for many months. The reason they put the cast on me, the cast doesn't make it heal. The cast uh, protects it while it heals. And so we do the same thing emotionally and spiritually. When we are hurt, we want to cover that spot, that thing that has been hurt so that other people can't touch it. And I get that. That's completely normal. We shut it off. We close it off. Uh, Some people have been hurt with love And so they close love off. Some people have been hurt emotionally, and so they close that off. It's not that they're bad people. It's just that they simply do not want to continue to get hurt in that manner. And so as we close ourselves off, the part of the healing journey is learning to first open ourselves up. There comes a time that when I broke my leg, there came a time after months of being in a cast that the doctors took the cast off. They opened it up and they revealed that leg again. And I remember I had to go through some physical therapy. I had to learn to put weight on it again. But it wasn't that the bone was no longer healed. It's that I had to mentally learn. I can put weight on on that leg again. After breaking both bones in my lower leg, it was it was hard. It was very difficult. Even though the doctors and the x-rays, the people I trusted, the people that had done the surgery and walked me through the process had told me the leg is strong. The bones are now stronger than they were. I still had to get it through my mind mentally, emotionally. I can put weight on this leg. So before we can truly heal, The things that we have closed off, we've got to learn to open them up. But who do we open them up to? Let me suggest to you today that the first thing that we do is we open ourselves up to God. We open ourselves up to God because we know we can trust God. We know he's not going to hurt us. See, the problem is, is that many of us, we want to let go of our past. We hear people tell us, let go of that pain, let go of that trauma, let go of it. But Is it really the letting go that we need to do or is it the opening up? Because the opening up to God first, because we can trust him. So instead of letting go of the past, what we really need to do is let God of the past. So did you catch that? It's not a letting go of the past. It's the letting God of the past or letting God use your past because some of us have protected ourselves and our pain and our hurt so long that now we wonder, can I really, is it okay? Can I really put weight on it again like I did with my leg? So we open ourselves up to God. God begins to then heal us. 
not in a way of letting it go, but in the way of letting God use it. That is the ultimate healing experience. Taking the thing that has been closed off, opening it up to God so that then God can heal us and then use us to open ourselves up to others. So the process, we get hurt, we close off. Then we need to open up what we have closed off, but we open that up to God first because he's trustworthy. He's proven himself trustworthy. He's not going to hurt us. He's not going to take advantage of our vulnerability. We're going to open ourselves up to God. And then as we get comfortable open to him, we are going to pray, God, I'm not trying to let this go. I know that sounds like it's counterintuitive, but it's not because now we're not just talking about a mental health professional. We're talking about spiritual health because now I'm opening myself up. I'm not trying to let it go. I'm acknowledging the fact that the past is there. The trauma is real, but I'm opening myself up to God. And then as God begins to heal me and I begin to pray, God, use me, then I can slowly open myself up to others. And so now those that are going through things where they are closed off, I can open myself up to them and tell them it's going to be okay. Here's how God helped me. It's not denying the reality of the pain. It's embracing that, but it's opening ourselves up to God and then to others. And we are not just helping others heal, but in the process of opening ourselves to God, opening ourselves to others, watching others get healed, at the same time we experience healing like never before. So it's not only helping others, it's also helping us. It's extremely spiritually liberating when we can get to a place that we say, okay, God, I am no longer going to close myself off I'm not going to close myself off to love. I'm not going to close myself off to trust. I'm not going to close myself off to being used by God. I'm not going to close myself off any longer. I'm going to open myself to God and then open myself to others, and I will heal and others will heal in the process. That is a powerful thing. I have witnessed this myself, not just in the lives of others, but in my own life. And we find this same type of healing in the life of Saul. Saul's painful past becomes a powerful purpose and testimony. In AD 33, Saul in Acts chapter 8 held the coats for those that stoned Stephen. Acts 8 and 1 says Saul was consenting in Stephen's death. He wasn't just holding the coats. He was saying, kill that man. Saul made havoc of the church entering into houses, committing men and women to prison. Acts 9 and 1 says Saul continued to breathe out threats and slaughter against the saints. And then in AD 34, Saul sent letters to the synagogue of Damascus telling them that if they catch any Christians to bind them up and send them in chains to Jerusalem to be tried. But everything began to change. When Saul was on his way to Damascus, Saul was blinded by a light. Here's a voice from the Lord. God speaks to him, corrects him, tells him that it's he that he's persecuting. He gets this revelation and God speaks then to Ananias about Saul. And in Acts 9 and 15, God tells Ananias that Saul is a, he still used the word Saul. Not Paul yet. He used the word Saul. God tells Ananias, Saul is a chosen vessel to bear his name to the Gentiles before kings and to the children of Israel. Now, this blows my mind because Saul has done grievous things. He's held the coats. He is consenting to the death of Stephen and to other saints. He has caused havoc throughout the churches. He has gone into synagogues and into homes, and he has pulled men and women out and put them in chains and sent them to Jerusalem to be tried. He has murdered many and done many of these grievous things, yet Saul has been chosen by God. What a past. If we had a past like that, it would never even cross our minds that God could still use us because that past would be so grievous. In AD 56, 
Now, if you're following along, I'll, I'll show you again. It was in AD 33, then AD 34, and now in AD 56. The Bible even says that Paul, now Paul, not Saul, opened up his letter to the Roman church by calling himself a servant of God. He embraces his calling as an apostle, separated under the gospel. That, that's not just an introduction. This is a man that is letting us know who he is, what he is. He's letting us know, this is my calling. He's letting us know that God has chosen him. He's saying what God told Ananias is true. I have been chosen for the purpose of the gospel. A.D. 59 Paul stands on the stairs as the mob of Jews at Jerusalem come after him, and he preaches in the Hebrew tongue to them, and Paul begins his sermon with something incredible. Do you know what he began his sermon with? I'm glad you asked. He began his sermon with his own testimony. He begins to tell them that he, as a Jew, held the coats when Stephen was stoned. He tells them that he persecuted the church and that he done many things. He openly talks about all of the things that he did in the past. Now, that amazes me because we went from AD 33 to AD 59. His past no longer controlled him. His passion for the things of God had consumed him instead. What an incredible difference God made and those 26 years made. We went from a man that did things that he would never want to tell anybody about to a man chosen by God changed by God, repented, baptized in Jesus' name, full of the Holy Ghost. Now he is preaching. He is telling people, I am chosen of God. Even though he has a traumatic past, he is still chosen by God. That is a powerful thing. These years that pass by shows that by the time we get to Paul standing on the steps in Jerusalem preaching, he could have started with anything. He had 26 years of ministry under his belt. Now he can start with any great story. He could start about a testimony of how someone was healed. He could start with a testimony of how maybe a blind eye was open or a demon was cast out. He could start with a great testimony of how a church was established on one of his missionary journeys, but he doesn't. What he does is he opens himself up. He reveals his vulnerability and he uses what he went through in the past as an example that he could preach about because there is no greater testimony. The Bible's powerful. Nothing's more powerful than the Bible, but people will connect with a personal testimony. People can attempt to deny the Bible, but it's very difficult to deny it when someone you know is standing in front of you saying, I went through something traumatic in my past. I did something horrible in my past, or something horrible was done to me, but here I stand right now, not covering it, not hiding it, not letting it control me, but now I stand before you like Paul preaching. This is a sign that Paul's past no longer controlled him, and he was using it as proof, as a testimony that God can do incredible things for anybody that'll let him. God brought healing. God brought deliverance. God brought forgiveness to Saul, and Saul becomes Paul. Everything changes. That's powerful because the same thing can happen for you. That's God's purpose for you is for you to get to a place. It may take 26 years. It may take one day. It may take one year. It There's no set time, but there comes a a point that we open up the things that have been closed off to God, and then God helps us open them up to others, and it becomes part of the testimony of the grace of God and the healing of God because you are so uniquely created that you, with your testimony, you will be able to reach people that I will never be able to reach and I people that you would never be able to reach because God is wanting to use our pain, our painful past to become a powerful witness of his grace. So I I need to know, 
if Paul was able to open himself up and preach about his painful past in the attempt to reach others, how did this happen? Because I need that. I need to know how do I open myself up like that. Paul's powerful words to the Philippians really reveals that. Gives us the answer, Philippians 3, verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. Paul saying, I'm not saying I have it all together. Neither were already perfect. I'm not doing everything perfect. Everything I I do isn't always perfect. I don't have it all together. But I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Jesus Christ. In other words, I haven't got it all together yet, but Jesus has still got a hold of me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. In other words, he's saying, I don't have it all together. I'm not saying that I have apprehended everything. I don't have it all right and together, but this one thing I got. There's a lot I'm still working on, but there's one thing I know for sure that I have. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, I'm not perfect yet. There's still things I'm working on, but I got this one thing for sure. You've got to forget the past and you've got to press forward. Now, he used the word, the King James uses the word forgetting. Forgetting... Well, forgetting sounds impossible. And let's be honest, how do you forget a traumatic past? How do you really forget it? Well, let's define that because that word doesn't really mean to forget it as if it never happened. It means to get to a place where the past no longer controls the present. So forgetting here, it doesn't mean that you pray and then all of a sudden, I don't remember ever being hurt. Because that's not how it works. Then you couldn't be used to reach other people, to help other people. It's not a matter of forgetting as if it never happened. It is a matter of the Spirit through the impartation of the Holy Ghost getting us to a place that the past no longer controls the present. In other words, I don't have to walk around closed off all the time and, and, and thinking that people are going to hurt me all the time. I don't have to live with no trust and live in fear. And I, I don't have to live that way because now I don't even have to hide that I deal with certain things emotionally. I don't have, because many of us, we want people to see the best of us. And that's, that's understandable. But in reality, there are times that we cover things Because we're afraid of what someone else will think of us. We have anxieties. There's times we feel discouraged. There's times we feel depression. And we think, I can't let anybody know this. Nobody could ever know that I feel this way. What will they think of me? You know what they'll think of you? They'll think that you're strong. Yes, there may be one or two that say something negative, but more than likely those that would say something negative are dealing with it themselves and they're using their comments to make themselves look stronger than they really are. But it's in our revealing of our weakness that other people then are connected to us because they know I feel that way and if they can make it, I can make it. And so it's forgetting that's impossible but moving forward in a way where our past no longer controls our present, that is possible. We need to recognize the difference between learning from the past and letting the past control us. Understand that it's healthy to look back as long as you're learning from the past and remembering how God worked in your life. Beware of becoming so preoccupied with your past that it begins to dictate your present and your future. Don't let your past define you. That's God's job. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 gives us further instruction. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Goes this, this new creature in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, goes all the way back to Genesis, to the creation story. New creature is defined as new creation. The key to transforming your past is to accept God's mercy because you're worth it. He died for you. He proved your worth by the price he paid. And so old things are passed away. All things have become new because when you were 
filled with the Holy Ghost, when you repent and were baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, when you pray, you are new creature, new creation. The same words that he spoke and created the heavens and the earth are speaking into your life. And so the old things do not have to control you and the past doesn't have to control you and you can feel free to open yourself to God. I'll say it like Paul did, but I once knew a man that when he was a very young child, somewhere maybe four or so years old, that he experienced sexual abuse from someone that was supposed to be trusting, someone that you thought you could trust. And it continued on for quite a while, and this sexual and physical abuse was finally brought to light, and things happened, and the older that this young child got, he began to have some resentment toward the person that did it, and that's natural. And there was a time that they heard that the person that had done these things had died. And for a moment, that person felt glad that the abuser had died. Then that they realized this is not a godly feeling. It's a natural feeling, but it's not a godly feeling. And so how did this young boy go from being sexually abused and not just sexually abused, but trust broken? How do you go through that and be okay? Because there, there has to be a process because that abuse makes you want to be closed off. But I know him well, and I know that he had a great family around him. And I also know that the shame of what had happened, even though it wasn't his fault, as he began to grow more comfortable and grow older, he realized that there were many people in the church that had been abused. As he began to travel and preach around, he found out that there was a lot of people that had dealt with this. And all of a sudden, a tragic, traumatic situation that happened to him when he was very young all of a sudden become a, a bridge into helping someone else. And then he began to talk about it and slowly begin to talk about it with other people. And then slowly, uh, it come to a point that he was able to preach about it. And then as he was able to preach about it openly, obviously with, with respect to the pulpit and the, the language used and uh, being able to do it. I, I, there were times that, that people would run to the altar when he would preach that message and talk about that story. They would run to the altar and receive healing from abuse and trauma that they had suffered long ago because they realized that when somebody was willing to open themselves up and become vulnerable and embrace the fact that it happened, and instead of saying, let it go, saying, let God use it, that person is still preaching today, and they still tell those stories today, and people are still being healed today, but it took a process for him to get to the place that he was comfortable mentioning it and talking about it. And then in that, instead of feeling shame for what happened, worrying about what other people would think about what happened, it now becomes something that he's no longer ashamed of at all. He can freely talk about it, freely open. We'll talk about it with anyone. We'll talk about it on this very podcast because God is a healer. God works and does incredible life-changing things to us when we learn to open ourselves up instead of staying closed. The Bible tells us the story of the demoniac of Gadara. It was an embarrassing past, demon-possessed, living, the Bible even said, naked and alone in the tombs of Gadara, crying throughout the night. He was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands. Oftentimes, he would experience partial freedom by breaking the bands, but he never escaped the graveyard, never escaped the tombs, and we can be exactly like that. We can feel better, but if we never really get complete healing, then we, tr- then we never really escape the pain. We're always caught in the tombs. I want you to notice the Bible says in Luke 8, 35, that that when the Lord healed him, when the Lord spoke to him and he was delivered and the devils departed, he came sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. 
And he wanted to leave the area, get a fresh start by following along with Jesus. That way he could leave the area. Nobody had to go, that's the man that was in the tomb. He never had to wonder, are, are they laughing at me knowing that I was the naked man in the tombs? That never, that, he never, if I leave here and I get a fresh start, I never have to deal with the people knowing again. Jesus said in Luke 8, 38, now the man out of the tomb, uh, whom the devils were departed, besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Jesus said, return to thine own house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published. That word published means that he told, he described what God had done for him. He published, he told what God had done. He described what God had done throughout the whole city, how great things Jesus had done unto him. He had been overwhelmed with gratitude, and he wanted to follow Jesus, that he would never have to see the people that knew that's the man with the painful past in the tombs. He could leave and speak of the goodness of God and never have to have anybody know, oh, that's the man with the embarrassing past. That's the man with the painful past. The man's painful past became a testimony when he was willing to share it with others. How many people believe in Jesus? How many people believe and are healed, but yet then they want to cover themselves, and they don't ever want to use the past to become a healing mechanism for others. They want to just experience Jesus and stay covered and stay cowardly and crowded behind, hiding behind the wine press like Gideon, and they just want to cover themselves and say, I can't, I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to know. I understand. We need to make sure that that we do things in a responsible and emotionally sound manner. But there comes a moment that we need to understand that the Lord looked at the man of Gadara and said, you have a painful past. Now go tell everybody about how I healed you of that past. Go open yourself up. You opened yourself. When he ran to Jesus, that was him opening himself up to Jesus. He gets healed, and now the Lord says, now that you've opened yourself up to me, go open yourself up to others. Don't hide what you've been through because telling it to others becomes a spiritually liberating a way of healing and God using you to reach other people. So there are steps in transforming your painful past into a powerful testimony. Remember, you are not the bad that you've endured. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are divinely created for a purpose that is uniquely designed for you and only you, designed by God. Revelation 12 and 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood is salvation provided by Jesus to the whole body, body, mind, and soul. And our testimony, that is what encourages others. It is the man of Gadara being told, go tell what God has done. It is the young man that endured abuse being able to go tell what God has done. It is Saul becoming Paul and Paul standing on the steps and saying, this is what God has done for me, he delivered me of my painful past and healed me. So our testimony is powerful. It's important. It encourages others. Encourage others. Realize that your experiences in life aren't just for your own benefit. They're also designed to help other people. Use what you've learned about moving on to encourage others to do the same thing. Not just let go, move on, but let God and let others be healed. We're emotionally sensible. We should turn the negative experiences of our lives into positive reinforcement and help for others. This doesn't mean that we're required or even should reveal all of our personal or embarrassing past. It does, however, mean that we should allow God to help us to become active and looking for ways that we can seek out others and help them be healed just like we were. We can become an example, a testimony of surviving. It connects in a powerful way to those that are struggling with the same. Both people 
you, me, and others, we all receive healing. It starts slow, and it really does get easier with time. Opening to God, opening to others. It starts slow, and it gets easier and easier in time. I know, listener, that you've been going through a lot of difficult things, but God is ready to turn your painful past into a powerful testimony. As become our tradition, I'd love to pray with you just for a few moments. Lord God, I know that you have timed this perfectly with those that need to hear it. And I'm asking you, Lord, that you would reach down and help them Help them know that the great physician, you have touched their lives and there comes a moment that they need to open themselves up to you. Lord, the area that they've closed off, let them open it to you right now. Let them begin to open it to you because we can trust that you're not gonna hurt us and that as we open that area to you and we test it, we put a little weight on it, we begin to know that it's healed, it's gonna be okay. Then God, help us to begin to open ourselves up to others. Lead us, guide us, Lord. Let healing come not only to the trauma, but to our minds and our bodies. Lord, touch the listener right now that they can experience healing like never before. I believe you're gonna do it in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to share the podcast. Please continue to share with your friends and family. Please subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you've enjoyed the show, tell a friend, maybe even share a link on your social media. Please consider leaving us a five-star review or a rating. It has been great seeing the reviews. It's been amazing reading responses from people that's getting in contact with me at buildinggreatlivespodcast at gmail.com. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum or on Instagram at Rev Gillum, G-I-L-L-I-A-M. And I look forward to hearing from you as you begin to open yourself up to God and to others. Healing for you, healing for others. And until next time, let's Keep building. You've been listening to the Building Great Lives podcast, a member of the Real Life Church Network. Join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions. 